As ILA Executive Director, one of the greatest honors I have is to present the Harlan B. Carter Award for Legislative Achievement. It's the highest honor ILA bestows. The Harlan Carter Award is given only to individuals who have shown outstanding leadership and achievement on behalf of, of gun owners. Our recipient this evening has met those standards time and again and has consistently made support of gun owners' rights a central theme of his work as both a legislator and now as governor. In the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, we witnessed one of the greatest tragedies in Second Amendment history. Government officials confiscated firearms, often at gunpoint, from law-abiding citizens who were simply trying to protect their homes and protect their families. This outrageous act left people defenseless at a time when there was no 911 to call and looters and thugs were roaming the streets. That horrendous abuse of government power led tonight's honoree to ensure that never again would government be empowered to disarm people in a time of emergency. Please watch the video. Please open the door. They had AR-15s or M-16s. They were pointing at us. They told us, put your hands up in the air. Let us see your hands. They're drawing down on me? And they let the looters run rampant for over a week? Are you kidding me? I really thought they were going to kill me. I really did. They didn't care what your rights were. They were going to deny them. You're letting the thugs get away with everything and you're coming to honest good citizens and taking away their protection and it is wrong. There was mayhem. New Orleans police did not have control of the city anymore. I was a victim. My family was a victim. And it's not going to happen again. Vinnie Purvel and his neighbors at Algiers Point had survived Hurricane Katrina, but they weren't sure they would survive the ruthless attacks by armed looters. There was one point we became fearful for our lives. It was the day after the storm, and Vinny was out checking on some neighbor's homes when two thugs clubbed him with a sledgehammer and carjacked his van. And then one of them stood over me with the mall and said, don't move, we want your, we want your truck. So the other one dug through my pocket, got the keys, got in the, the van and took off. It was a police car just a few feet behind them, but um, he wouldn't pursue it. Vinny knew then they were in trouble. No police protection meant that the looters would keep coming back, and they did. Three young men came through. There was gunfire, about 20 rounds fired right in front of me, and my mom jumped on the floor. Gunfire that hit too close to home. So Vinny pulled out an old shotgun that had been given to them. Back when we came home with it, we didn't like guns, so we put it in the back of a closet and just left it there and actually forgot about it. We but not anymore. They used that shotgun and some firearms borrowed from neighbors who had left town to set up Fort Pelican, a watchtower on Vinny's balcony all to keep the thugs out. We sat here on this balcony at nighttime and slept on this balcony in the chairs and you hear gunfire all over. And well, we didn't see a policeman. And we couldn't call 911 up. And until this occurrence here, I didn't realize what the necessity was for it. But now I do. Now I'm gonna get me a gun. I'm gonna learn how to use that gun. I'm gonna protect my home. Go get one. If you're an honest citizen, get one if you're in fear. Marie Galatis, a Baptist minister, faced the same story in her neighborhood. The same threats by thugs, the same lack of police, but she never once felt afraid. I had my Bible and I had my gun, and I knew I was safe. Marie knows she was lucky. She was never forced to leave home and didn't have her firearm confiscated. It's going against my, my constitutional rights as a citizen. But Marie remembers how upset she got when the police department threatened to take her firearm. Yeah, no one will be able to be armed. We will take all weapons. So what you come and get my gun for? I'm a good citizen. Why don't you go get some of these people that's murdering people and robbing the stores and breaking in homes and everything? What are you worrying about me for? I'm a widow. I'm 65. I'm here by myself. Ladies and gentlemen, this governor knew what his predecessor and what the mayor of New Orleans did not. Confiscating guns from law-abiding citizens is not simply wrong, it's tyrannical. His leadership on the issue led to broad bipartisan support of the Disaster Recovery Protection Act, 
This vital piece of legislation passed Congress with overwhelming support, and on October 4, 2006, President Bush signed it into law. His success in shepherding this important measure into law is even more remarkable when you learn he did it in his very first term in Congress. As you know, that's not typical. But nothing about Bobby Jindal's career has been typical. A native of Baton Rouge, he was the youngest member of Louisiana Governor Mike Foster's cabinet at the age of 24 as the head of the Department of Health and Hospitals. He turned a $400 million deficit into a $200 million surplus by eliminating waste, fraud, and corruption. Isn't it nice to see an elected official actually do it instead of just talk about it? He headed a state university system. He's run a national task force on Medicare reform. He became the first non-incumbent in Louisiana history to win election to that office of governor without a runoff. He's now the youngest governor in the nation and one of the most popular. I proudly stood beside the Second Amendment champion at numerous events last year as he campaigned to become the governor of Louisiana. I've watched in his first four months as governor as he's moved with historic speed to keep his promises. That's why he's one of the Republican Party's rising national stars, and a lot of us think he'd make a great vice president. I know, and you can take it to the bank, that he will always protect our Second Amendment freedoms and our hunting heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming this year's winner of the Harlan B. Carter Award, Governor of the great state of Louisiana, Bobby Jindal. This award bears the name of past winners that put you in very good company. Please accept this award with the deepest gratitude of everyone in our association. Governor, please. Thank you, buddy. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you for that very warm welcome. Chris, thank you for those kind words. I want to thank Chris. I want to thank Wayne. I want to thank everybody up here for their incredible friendship, for their leadership. I want to thank the NRA for everything they do for defending our freedom. Aren't we lucky to have them defending our rights? Let's give them a round of applause. The NRA and all of us are so lucky to have a dedicated and talented team doing so much for us in Washington, D.C. Wayne, Chris, John, all of them, and I better stop, I'll leave somebody out. But you know, there's a reason there is a reason you haven't seen Speaker Nancy Pelosi, you, there is a reason you haven't seen her pass any new gun control laws. And you can be sure it's not because all of a sudden she's become a supporter of the Second Amendment. It's not because of that at all. It's because the NRA has a great team standing on the wall for each and every one of us every day. This is a great honor to be here with you today. As a matter of fact, as the governor of the state, known as the sportsman's paradise, it really doesn't get much better than this. And as the governor of the sportsman's paradise, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you a little bit about what's going on in Louisiana. We're making a lot of changes in Louisiana. We're making a lot of changes very quickly. As Chris has mentioned, we've changed our ethics laws. We went from 44th, according to the Center for Public Integrity, to first best in the country for disclosure. We're changing our tax codes. I've cut, eliminated, or reduced Five taxes, five taxes this week, I just endorsed the largest income tax reduction in Louisiana's entire history. We're changing business regulations. Heck, we're changing everything but the great food and culture down in Louisiana. 